Hi folks, welcome to Devs and Dice. My name is Leif, and this week's mini was inspired by some of the comments that I got. Before we get to that, I want to ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Also, remember to hit that bell icon to not miss any of our videos. This is an excellent way to support the channel and to make sure that more of these videos can come out in the future. So with that out of the way, let's get to it. A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. &D. As my passion for D&D &D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright guys and gals out there, so this is the Beholder from Whiskids Nolser's Marvelous Miniatures. So the package itself comes with the actual mini, uh, the base, and then there's some uh, extra arms and whatnot in case you wanted to use uh, arms that have the actual spell effect in it. And there was also a lens which uh, has been widely debated uh, online. Some of the, um, what do you call these? The eye stalks uh, come loose from the model. Uh, I start out with just taking off all of the ones that weren't uh, permanently fixed so that I could clean the model uh, as effective as possible. The areas that I found were particularly uh, troublesome with this mini was uh, there were some mold lines on the body, but primarily there were some, I would say, uh, excess uh, primer on the teeth, uh, especially it was visible in between the teeth. And since the teeth uh, is quite a large or a big portion of this mini, uh, that was one area of interest. The same went for the actual eye stalks. Uh, they even had mold lines uh, in the middle of the eyes. Here I'm just gluing in all of the, uh, the removable eye stalks once the model has been cleaned. Then it was time to glue the model to the actual base. I'm just using super glue and then to ensure that it has a nice snug fit, I just applied two clamps on um, opposite sides of it, keeping somewhat even pressure on it. The first paint I'm going to start out with is Bugman's Glow, and I really recommend that you start out with the mouth. Uh, it's a tricky uh, thing to get in all over there, so I didn't even care about being, you know, uh, neat and careful at this point. It was just, you know, getting all of the parts in that fleshy uh, beholder mouth tone. Once that was done, I started with the actual uh, gum to the teeth.
Now I was thinking of what color this beholder should be and I half and half actually wanted to use uh, as much as possible of my citadel color so um, I uh, used went for Cantor blue I think this is called. I'm just stippling in uh, the base coat of uh, the blue sort of on his actual uh, well I guess you wouldn't say the body but the actual sort of uh, bulk of the, the, the beholder. I didn't want it to be a single color so uh, for the eye stalks I left some of it unpainted and this I used the what is it called heavy violet or something from uh, Vallejo um, just to sort of get uh, on top of the eye stalks. For some reason, the camera is having uh, quite, you know, severe issues with picking out the difference between the purple and uh, the, um, the blue. Here I'm mixing in some of that flesh tone and some of that blue just to get sort of a, somewhat a mid-tone. There are some parts around the mouth and around the eyes that I felt uh, shouldn't be fully the same color as uh, the gums or the fleshy parts. But at the same time these should ideally not be blue because they were quite clearly separate parts that looked much more um organic let's uh, let's say it like that here i'm coming in with some racket art flesh and like you can see i've sped this up here i'm just mixing that so i can get a little bit more of a brighter sort of off tone color uh, that I previously used. I just want to sort of start adding in some of the highlights for the gums and the fleshy parts. Here I'm mixing, uh, ooh, I don't even remember the colors, but uh, sort of uh, different tones of brown into sort of two tones of uh, browns. I'm going to use these uh, two colors on the bone, protruding bone pieces on the side of the beholder's head. Um, so I'm going in with the darker first and then going slightly less with the brighter one so that I gradually can sort of work that out to uh, a bone color eventually. And I'm trying to move fast, I'm sort of keeping everything very organic and I'm doing the same thing with the teeth because these should be start out with very sort of grimy dirty teeth. I, I knew I wanted a lot of definition on the actual teeth and the eye. Uh, I mean, let's be honest here, uh, a beholder is essentially eyes and, and uh, teeth, uh, so that was uh, essential. Then I uh, come in with some, uh, I think it's more sort of a bone color and just do a sort of a, a third layer on these bone protrusions and also on uh, the teeth, building up that highlight or that graduation of colors slowly, methodically and uh, yeah, bit by bit. And I'm here actually trying to paint in a slightly different way than I've painted before. I'm trying to be more, I guess you would call it sketch style, but actually using colors. So instead of doing a, a black and white sketch style, I'm actually trying to be brave and just sort of going gun ho in. And uh, you know what? Let's see what happens. Here I'm coming in with some skeleton bone from Army Painter as another tone on the teeth and also on the 
the bone protrusions. You're gonna hear me say teeth and bone protrusions. Yeah, I can't even pronounce that. Protrusions, whatever. The bony bits on, on the side of his head. Also important, if you're having problems with reaching certain parts with this model, it was tricky in some uh, cases. Remember, you can rotate the model around, you can spin it around, make the three-dimensional object work for you, not against you as much as possible. And here you can see those bony protrusions I'm, I'm coming in and penciling in sort of another layer of highlight. Here I'm mixing in that skeleton bone with some white to do, you guessed it, another layer of highlights for, uh, yeah, those bony bits. Yeah, and of course, let's not forget the teeth. Here I'm using some of that white just to clean up the main eye a little bit. Just so we have a nice solid uh, white base to uh, work from. You can see in the background that I'm using some of that flesh tone and some of the white tone to create another uh, highlight for the fleshy bits. In this case, it's the gums uh, and also some parts of, I do believe, um, the eyelids and the sort of fleshy bits around his mouth. Here I'm coming in with some corn red. Mixing that with the white to create a little bit more of a pinkish tone. I've diluted that so it becomes almost glaze-like because I want to just hit the sides of the eye because uh, I know I'm going to want to build up some sort of red, you know, uh, veins and whatnot. I use the same uh, color but uh, undiluted or not as diluted to do some highlights on the tongue and uh, wet parts inside his mouth. For the eyes, on the eye stalks, I started out with uh, penciling in the white. Then I created a mixture between the purple and the white just to do some basic highlights. And I did the same thing except with the blue for some highlights on the actual body of uh, the beholder. There are some bony bits around uh, his face. I uh, sort of try to call these out by giving them a little bit more highlight in a different sort of uh, off-white brown color. Um, the fleshy bits around the face also got a round of highlights. And here, for some reason, I, I'm continuing to paint in the white eye stalks. I'm going to use three main colors for the actual uh, iris of the eye. I started out with some orange and my idea was that I would use orange and then work myself uh, up to sort of yellow, giving that sort of nice fiery, embery sort of um, iris look.
Here I'm just coming in with some black to fill in the black center of the eye, the pupil. Here I'm starting with the orange on the eye stalks and I think this is where I realize that I've done one cardinal sin and that is that often uh, eyes have uh, the darkest part are, is actually on the very outside of the iris. So I'm coming in with some, uh, I guess you would call it rust brown or something like that from P3 starting with the main eye and sort of creating that nice darker border which of course meant that I had to come in again with some oranges and some yellows to redefine uh, what I've uh, previously done. So starting out uh, with the eye stalks I am now using that rust brown to sort of uh, get the general shape of the eye. Once I've done that on all of the eye stalks, I come in, with, come in with some orange and then with some yellow details. And then finally, once that had dried, I just did some uh, nice thin pupils uh, and it looked something like this. Here I'm working on that glaze on the side of the eyes, just getting a little bit a hint of red, making them seem a little bit more natural. And uh, I really want these eyes to look quite intimidating. Here I'm coming in with some uh, 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 a highlight uh, on the top left corner of all of the eye stalks to give the illusion of a, a hard specular highlight. I'm using some Seraphim Siphia just to sort of define the very, uh, I guess, a root of the uh, teeth. So make sure that you move your wash so it uh, covers, if it pools, or it shouldn't pool, but you want it to be focused primarily on the root of uh, whatever you're painting. Here, my idea was that I want um, it to be sort of brighter the further out it comes from the actual body. So you can see with my brush, I'm trying to move uh, all of that wash to the root. When it comes to the gums and the actual sort of eye and whatnot, I'm coming in with some Reichlin Flesh Shade just to sort of give it a little bit more reddish tone. And of course, the inside of the mouth gets a good soaking of this wash. And the same with some of the eyes, just to again reinforce the, a little bit more of a red tone in the eyes. I'm using some of that, I think it's called Drakenhof Nightshade, just to give the body a little bit more definition. And then I'm using Druichi Violet for some of the eye stalks. And here I'm starting to think about the base and I wanted to use some of Vallejo Earth Textures Thick Mud. So I'm just sort of slapping it on first and foremost. Then I'm using a wet brush that you don't uh, care that much about to sort of shape and model uh, the clay how I want it to uh, be. And that's what it looks like when it was dried. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the base and then I figured it out. I wanted to have some skulls. So I picked some skulls from my Citadel pack and primed them using a uh, wraith bone and then a basic coat of contrast paints skeleton horde would give them enough definition to to be convincing as skeleton parts, the rest of the beholder's victims. So I'm just coming in with some super glue and basically placing these 
uh, skeleton parts where I feel that they make sense. Now, unfortunately, the texture paste had dried, so I had to come in with another layer, a thin layer, where I built in the skeletal parts so they looked like an in in integrated part of the actual base. Once all of the base had dried, I uh, give it a good wash with some Nuln oil just to get the shadowy uh, or the darker areas and make it look much more natural and uh, defined. While that is uh, drying, I'm gonna do my best to pencil in some of those veins or, or um, whatever you call it in the eyes. Here I'm uh, consciously going a little bit overboard so I can dial it back down a little bit coming in with some white and just sort of glazing that back. Here I'm using some of Citadel's uh, dry brushes, you can really, or dry brush colors, you can really use any of these, any uh, brighter off-white, just to get the base uh, to get some highlights. And then it was uh, time to paint the rim. Now one thing that bothered me was once I had covered this entire model with some matte uh, varnish, you know, of course I needed to go in with some gloss on the eyes, on the mouth, on the eye stalks, but the, the actual transparent stand needed to also get a coat. Time to see some of the glamour shots. All right, good people, that was it for this episode. Please feel free to comment down below and tell me what you thought about the end result. As always, if you like these videos where I paint D&D minis and you want to see more of them in the future, like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. You know the drill. You know the drill. You know this. So I think this will be the last miniature painting video for this year. Me, myself, I'm gonna take some well-deserved vacation uh, during the holidays, but I will be back early next year. And, well, let's just say that there might be some very exciting things in the pipeline, but more on that later. But before I leave you, I wanna take this opportunity to uh, thank you all who have liked, shared, commented, subscribed, uh, throughout this year. Uh, lots of love to you all. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a very, very Happy New Year. So until next time, toodaloo.